Hello everybody. We start in the name of Lord, they were benevolent and they were sustainer. Today's lecture, fourth lecture is about attitude or attitude and behavior. Uh, what is attitude? What are the types and what is behavior and what are the types? Uh, no two people are alike or same. We have studied in the last lectures that no one is same as other in terms of behaviors, in terms of personality, in terms of attitude. Uh, in terms of appearance, like body, structure, height, weight, color, etc. And in terms of abstract aspects like intelligence, attitude, personality, be behavior, and so on and so forth, humans are changed. Um, people often try to influence others. For example, if uh, uh, a salesperson wants to uh, sell goods, so uh, how will he convince? the customer or the consumer if a politician wants to stand to be nominated for uh, or to be a candidate so what will he do of course he will ask and exhort for voting um, other things example managers attempt to maintain employees dedication to work advertisers try to raise interest in consumers all they need is the behavior and the motivation the the attitude they they will act uh, what is an attitude you know and first uh, we say that an attitude is how a person thinks or feels about something or someone how he feels, how he uh, about some one or something, maybe that is favorable or unfavorable. We say attitudes or evaluative statements, either favorable or unfavorable about objects, people, and events. They reflect how we feel about something. Uh, when we say, "I like my job." I'm expressing my attitude about work. Yeah. When you say I like my job, it is the expression of my attitude about work. Attitudes are complex. If you ask people about their attitude towards religion uh, or the organization they work for or may, you may get a simple response. But the reasons underlying the response are probably complex enough. Uh, well, uh, we say that attitudes are lasting. They they are they are not very short term. There is a model by the name of Betari Box model. He explained the attitude in a very informative way. He says that my attitude affects my behavior. My behavior affects your attitude your attitude will ultimately affect your behavior and your behavior will affect my attitude so this diagram tells us that what affects us my attitude will affect your behavior and your behavior will affect my attitude and my attitude will affect your behavior and your behavior will affect my attitude this is a very basic uh, diagram uh, given by Betari. Uh, there are three uh, basic components of uh, attitude. Attitude, as I said before, that they are evaluative statements or judgments concerning objects, people, or events. Uh, researchers have assumed that there are three components of uh, attitude they are cognition, affect, and behavior. So the first one is cognitive component, second one is affective component, and the last one is behavioral component. If I say my pay is low, it is a description. It is the cognition component 
of my attitude the aspect of an attitude there is a description of a belief uh, in the way things are it means that what am, what is my belief what is my opinion my opinion is this that my pay is low uh, it sets the stage for the more critical part of an attitude and that is affective it is the first step and after you believe something it's your, you give your opinion about something another stage that comes is affective component Affect is the emotional or feeling segment of an attitude and it's reflected in the statement. If I say, I'm angry over how little I'm paid, look, it, it is the uh, um, emotional part of the feelings. If I say, I'm angry over how little I'm paid, in the first statement, in the last example, we say, uh, my pay is low. That is a cognition, that is an opinion, that is a belief. If we come to the second part, and that is effective uh, segment, so then we say I am angry over how little I am paid. Look, the, the emotions that I give is my angriness. Finally, we come to the last stage, and that is behavioral stage. Uh, we say that uh, the behavioral component of an attitude refers to uh, an intention to behave in a certain way towards someone or something. If I say I'm going to look for another job that pays better, then it means it's my intention to uh, find another job. This is how I behave uh, with my job. If I'm paid low, then the ultimate outcome or the ultimate response or reaction will be finding another job. Uh, we say there are three types of uh, attitudes uh, and uh, before we go to attitude let, let me say there is, there is another uh, uh, diagram I think I've left out here but keep it in your mind that when an attitude is changed thought is changed when an attitude is changed thought is changed and when thought is changed behavior is changed when behavior is change, action is change. When action is change, results are changed. Uh, every individual have uh, lots of uh, attitudes. Uh, studying for a manager is difficult to study all the attitudes of an individual of an employee. So, uh, at, uh, a, a, a manager has to look for work-related attitudes and why are attitudes important because of their impact on employee behavior their job satisfaction their job involvement in organizational commitment so uh, it's difficult for a manager to study all the attitudes of an individual but he or she has to study job related attitudes and these attitudes are job satisfaction, job involvement, and organizational commitment. Uh, what is a job satisfaction? It means the positive or negative feelings that an individual holds toward his or her job. How he is positive? Is he positive regarding his job? Is he satisfied from his job or no? If he's yes, he's positive. Uh, uh, satisfied it's a positive attitude if he's not uh, satisfied then it's a negative at attitude a job involvement what does job involvement means it means uh, uh, identification with the job how someone is identified with the job is he actively participating in it and considering his performance to self-worth uh, the last uh, type of attitude organization commitment it means that uh, whether he is committed to the organization or whether he will stay or no or no he will leave or quit the job so we, the, these are the three types of uh, uh, attitudes the next is attitudes and workforce diversity yeah, it, it means uh, training the the employees uh, on their work environment they can reshape these trainings can reshape the attitude of uh, an employee 
participating in diversity trainings that provide them evaluation, they provide them uh, experience. Uh, they uh, exploring print and visual media that recounts and portray diversity issues for them. Uh, the first type we studied that there are three types of uh, attitudes. So job satisfaction, as before we said here now we will study in a bit detail. Uh, the refers to a person's feeling of satisfaction on the job, uh, which acts as a motivation to work. If he's satisfied, he's motivated, of course. He will perform well. He, his performance will be boosted. Uh, it's, not this, it's not a self-satisfaction. It's not a self-happiness or self-contentment, but related to job. It's on-the-job commitment. Satisfaction means uh, this uh, feeling of attainment of any goal or objective. When you are uh, satisfied, you are working towards the goals of the organization. Uh, when someone is dissatisfied from the job, so of course there will be less motivation and he will be absent of the job. He will make absenteeism. Uh, there are some effects of job satisfaction on employee performance and some are satisfaction and productivity, satisfaction and absenteeism, satisfaction and turnover. If someone is satisfied, of course, his pro productivity will be boosted. If someone is uh, satisfied, uh, his uh, uh, workers are more productive. If someone is satisfied, there will be less absenteeism. If someone is satisfied on the job, uh, there will be less turnover. He, they, they won't quit the, uh, the organization. It means there will be commitment of him in the organization. Moreover, uh, some uh, how employees can inf express this satisfaction how will we understand that this person this employee is dissatisfied uh, there are four uh, components and factors that we can understand and the first one is exit it means quitting the job second is voice active and constructive attempts to improve conditions his loyalty uh, passively waiting for conditions he is not active he is passively waiting for improvement and second is neglection uh, allowing conditions to worse and he he doesn't care of anything on the job he says let it get worse uh, what is the connection of job satisfaction with the OCB organization uh, citizen be behavior uh, it's interrelated and interlinked if, if an, a person or an employee is satisfied he will voluntarily work uh, on the job extra more extra extracurricular activities uh, satisfied employees who feel fairly treated by and are trusting the organization are more willing to engage in behaviors that go beyond the normal expectations of the other it means they are doing more than their job description listed on his if uh, a person or an employee is satisfied, uh, his customer, his clients will be of course satisfied. They, they will be more friendly, they will be more responsive and uh, they are less likely to turn over and help build long-term customer relationships. If uh, this, uh, customers are dissatisfied, uh, of course, uh, it will increase the employee job dissatisfaction for him and vice versa if dissatisfies uh, if an employee is dissatisfied so he will of course uh, be on the job dissatisfaction the second uh, type of uh, job uh, attitude is job involvement job involvement means identification psychologically you identify yourself with the job uh, the degree to which a person is central to a person's identity from an organizational perspective it means that you regard as the key uh, uh, to unlocking employee motivation and increasing productivity from individual perspective it means uh, a key to motivation performance personal growth and 
satisfaction in the uh, workplace. Employee involvement programs mean that you promote company loyalty by encouraging your employees uh, uh, for the sake of uh, owning the uh, mental ownership of the organization. They, they, they are mentally attached. It means they are attached to, to the organizations. Some programs uh, uh, that are taken to job involvement can be suggestion bosses, safety committees and idea weeks you provide such uh, kind of programs for them the last type of attitude is organizational commitment it means whether your employees are committed whether your employees will stay for longer in your uh, organization or not uh, what are the benefits of uh, organization commitment it determines how long employee will stay with your organization if they want to stay long with your organization so you will do investment on them you will train them you will develop them if if you know that the, that person is not going to be staying with us for long then your investment is a waste so uh, some of the key benefits and advantages are listed as below uh, the first one is high employee productivity if uh, organizational commitment exists there will be high productivity of the employee if uh, jo uh, job involvement exists then there will be low or reduced absenteeism and if they are committed to the organization they, they, he or she will be an excellent team player and lastly he will be a strong advocate this will all about attitude the next is behavior what is behavior uh, behavior we say is that it's an individual's reaction to a particular uh, person or environment behavior is everything a person does behavior refers to all the behaviors not just problem behaviors uh, we, we as we said that it is an individual reaction to a particular action uh, the way of thinking or feeling is reflected by a person's attitude on the contrary on the other hand a person conduct is reflected by his behavior attitude is defined by the way we perceive things whereas behavior is ruled by social norms uh, Behavior can be determined by applying the dead man's test. There was a uh, there is a test by the name of dead man's test. Uh, he says that in 1965, if a dead man can do it, it's not behavior. If a dead man can do something, it's not behavior. It means that anything done is behavior. So a dead man can do anything. If an, if a dead man can't do it, then it is behavior. Skinner is, uh, is a research scholar. He says that everything is behavior and included thinking on it. Uh, principles of behaviors, some principles, four principles we have. Almost all human behavior is learned. Behaviors are learned. Attitudes aren't. All behaviors occur for a reason. When there is a reason, so you will show a reaction. And that reaction is called... Uh, behavior so uh, next the third is behaviors continue to occur because they are effective and behaviors stop occurring because they are ineffective in some situations behavior will be effective in some situations it will be ineffective it depends on the situation uh, what is re reinforcement reinforcement your means encouragement maybe discouragement reward it can be punishment so there are two types of uh, reinforcement one is positive reinforcement and the second is negative reinforcement uh, positive reinforcement increases behavior by the addition of a desirable event when the behavior occurs when the behavior occurs and you you give a positive response to it example praise edible eatable things you give rewards by money so you you uh, give them rewards while negative reinforcement means you punish them, you give them 
punishment so punishment is negative re uh, rewards while uh, uh, positive rewards are uh, uh, re rewards intrinsic and extrinsic next is uh, functions of behavior there are two functions of as we discuss positive and negative uh, to obtain something desirable it's called positive re reinforcement and if to remove or to avoid something undesirable that's called uh, negative uh, behavior negative reinforcement uh, we come to types of behavior uh, there are two types of behaviors one is called innate behavior and the other is called uh, learned or learning behavior L uh, innate behavior means built-in uh, behaviors they are built-in they they are adopted they are they are learned they are not adopted indeed they are uh, they 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 are inherited uh, most of the time innate behaviors are used for the survival ship of a human being or any existing organism innate is the collection of responses and they are predetermined by inheritance uh, it means they, they they are set in the fitrat of a human being while learning behaviors mean they are acquired these behaviors are not passed from generation to generation because you learn them uh, so uh, innate behaviors can be uh, transferred because it it is a kind of inheritance mirasidi uh, while learning you you learn it from experience from training from practices example uh, is given here of the two types of behavior uh, for example dogs treat people as part of their work uh, uh, for example behavior is the way an organism a living thing acts towards its environment for example you are the stimulus that causes your dog to bark and wag its tail to shake its tail your dog's reaction to you is a response uh, the, the the shaking of the tail and barking of the dog is the response so was this behavior learned was this response learned or did your dog behave this way on his own number two innate behavior is inherited a behavior that an organism is born with its innate behavior such behaviors are inherited that they do not have to be learned because they are inherited they are uh, built in there are two types of innate behaviors one is called reflex and the second is called instinct a reflex uh, uh, innate behavior means it's an automatic response there is no involvement of brain in it the, the the message does not go to the brain exactly like uh, the example of uh, reflexive uh, uh, exa uh, innate behavior is sneezing shivering yawning when something hot is near to you 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 put your hand away from it blinking of eyes w when mosquito comes in these these things do not involve brain to to think over it directly it is an innate uh, behavior that you will respond to it while an in, an instinct is a complex pattern of innate behaviors instinct behaviors can take weeks to complete uh, instinct examples for example the spider is spinning a web jal jure um, birds building nets the fish salmon swimming upstream to re reproduce so these are the example of instinct behavior uh, up to this if you have got questions put your comments thank you very much